Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I am the guy who picked Thomas Denny to defeat Nick Diaz. That's right. All right. That's not right. That never happened. But either way, I am here to talk about UFC Fight Night 241, the main card. Opening up the main card, or at least for me anyway, because again, I think I butchered the order. Uh, but for me, I'm going to be talking about Temba Garimbo versus Ramiz Brahimai. This is a fight that is pretty interesting. I do think Rami, if my, Rami's Brahimai had had a few more later finishes or shown to be a little more dangerous on the feet, I would be picking him to win. But instead, I'm picking Temba Garimbo, and I'll be looking to hedge with Rami's Brahimai, winning by submission. And, you know, I'll see what round one submission looks like, but that's how he's gotten nine of his 10 wins round one submission. The other one is a round two submission over William Macario, former UFC fighter. Uh, but that's how he's gotten it done. And don't get me wrong. Temba Garimbo is susceptible to the submission to sound like a moron. He's been tapped twice as a pro to good fighters. Leon Mernhardt, the guy that beat Don Madge three times. And also AJ Fletcher who may not, not, may not be the best fighter, but he's a bona fide UFC fighter. And even though he cracked him with an elbow that sent them right into a guillotine choke, but he still finished him with the guillotine. As well as uh, the other fight, by the way, Leon Minhart. Also, he's been tapped twice by the same guy, Marcel Tenier, uh, as an amateur. I haven't seen the fights, but apparently a round one Ezekiel choke and rear naked choke. And that's something... You can kind of half dismiss because they're amateur, uh, they're amateur losses, but still, you kind of keep it in the back of your mind, especially because he's fighting a guy who's got 10 victories with 10 submissions. So I do think he's vulnerable to the tap, but I haven't seen that other professional loss, the Leon Minhart uh, guillotine, and I haven't seen his other two submission losses as an amateur. So I really can't uh, know more about it. The one submission I've seen was when he got cracked by an elbow you know, against A.J. Fletcher, which I honestly don't know how badly that elbow hurt him, but I have to mention it because it was such a beautiful setup. Really knocked him right into a guillotine. But I do think there is vulnerability there. And of course, chin-wise, he's the only one who's shown vulnerability there as well potentially getting cracked by A.J. Fletcher, but also getting knocked out by uh, Dave Mazzani, this guy that he was taking it to him in round one, but then just got sat on his ass in round two. And also, he was TKO'd in round three of an amateur fight. I wasn't able to see it, blah, 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 but just know uh, that I know it exists. So I have more doubt about Temba Garimbo, but I think he's certainly got it going on offensively. His striking seems to be coming along. I still don't think he has the greatest technique, but he's putting it together where he's shown some powers of late against Takashi Sato and against uh, Pete Rodriguez. All right. Maybe not the best competition, but still, he has shown power. Uh, but the, his opponent, Ramiz Brahimai, this guy has never been legitimately finished. The one illegitimate finish was against Max Griffin. Max Griffin was getting the better of him. It was a close enough fight early on, but in the end, Max was pulling away with it. But he really got the victory, uh, the stoppage, because he split his ear open and had his ear dangling off his head. Uh, kind of like Leslie Smith when she fought Jessica I, or Kazushi Sakuraba when he fought Marius Zaramskis, I think. But anyway, I think uh, Rami's Brahimai is reliably durable. I've seen him hurt with strikes or hit with hard strikes and put into submissions. And he, even though he looks tired and in a lot of these fights where he's been tested, he always looks like he's going to make it to the final bell. So I think he'll be able to take the danger of Temba Garimbo. But I do wonder about him uh, b being able to survive down the stretch with Temba Garimbo. Because it's not like he looks like he has awful cardio, Rami's Brahimai, but he has won 10 fights, all in round one and one in the first minute or two of round two. And then every fight that's gone past, he has lost. All four of his losses, even the Max Griffin fight, are all 
losses down the stretch. And it's not to say he looks like dog shit down the stretch. He had his best round against this guy, Evan Cutts, who's a decent fighter. He had his best round in round three against the guy. But I still think he's at a disadvantage against a guy who's proven to fight harder for 15 minutes in Temba Garimbo. So I will be picking Temba Garimbo to win. I think Temba Garimbo has good offense on the feet, but not great technique. But he's got danger. He's got to worry about keeping himself safe. And on the ground, I think Temba Garimbo is an excellent grappler. I would favor Rami's Brahimai, but I do think Tembo is uh, Temba is a bigger, better athlete, and I think he could make shit work for him anywhere, including on the ground. And also, if he gets put on his ass, I think he's at a disadvantage, but he's comfortable off his back as well. Whereas, uh, you know, I'm sure Rami's Brahimai is as well, but he doesn't have, I think, any triangle chokes. He's got a lot of guillotines and rear nakeds and whatever. Uh, arm triangle, but it's top game subs and guillotines. And I do think, uh, hey, those work too, because you can catch those in transition, like A.J. Fletcher did. But I uh, also think he's got one round to get it done, really, on paper. So not really knowing what Rami's Brahimai is going to look like either, after not having seen him fight for whatever it is, 27 months or something, I can't put all my faith in him and even all of his traits, but I have, you know, it's not like it's been five years since he's fought and I still remember him. I think he's got something to offer Temba Garimbo and I'll be looking to hedge with him winning by submission and round one submission. And if the odds are fucking wrong, I'll play knockout and whatever else fucking disqualification. But the pick is Temba Garimbo. I think he uh, is able to get by the danger of Rami's Brahimai and slow the fight down in the end and win, either with his range or his size and a grappling capacity. Rami's Brahimai did get out grappled in his fights against uh, uh, Court McGee and also against this guy, Justin Patterson. That's the other guy that beat him outside the UFC. He's only lost to really good fighters, and he's been hurt in these fights on the feet. It wasn't like they were all pure grappling fights. And Court McGee, you know, he mixes it up very well. But he was taken down, and he didn't have much to offer on his back, as opposed to when he's doing the dominating, ripping his opponents to the mat. So, yeah, there's uh, more hope for him winning early by submission, but I guess a little hope that he looks better in the end and finally uh, gets a late finish or even a decision victory. But I have to trust what I've seen on paper and just go, yeah, you know, uh, until I see him break through and get a third round finish or a decision, I'm just going to trust that that decision would go to Temba Garimbo or maybe he cuts his ear open and wins by round three stoppage again, either way. Uh, but Temba Garimbo is the pick and the bets will be every which fucking way. Up next, we have Luana Pinheiro versus Angela Hill. My prediction for this fight is Angela Hill wins a very tight decision. I think Angela Hill will be better down the stretch, uh, but I also think this will be a very close fight. I just give Angela Hill a slight advantage because she's a very durable fighter. She's becoming increasingly tough, tougher to wrangle in the first place. And at this point, I can't say it's impossible that she'd be submitted, but whereas I thought it was such a big weakness of hers just a few years ago. Now I can say it's like a thing of the past where she's only been submitted three times. Ronda Marcos with an arm bar, Rose Nama Yunes with a rear naked choke, and Carla Esparza with a rear naked choke, even though it was an exhibition fight and whatever the fuck. But those first two are champions, and Ronda Marcos was a very good fighter. And Ironically, uh, Luana Pinheiro has a victory over her via disqualification. That was uh, maybe her debut in the UFC or whatever, but Randa kicked her in the face, and it did hurt, and it was illegal. But there was a little bit of acting maybe as well. I don't know. Something to it. Uh, but anyway, she walked away with a victory there. It's a nice win on her record. And uh, uh, yeah, I think Angela Hill, I slightly favor her to win because I trust her cardio I think she's becoming increasingly easier to trust as a grappler or a defensive grappler or even an offensive grappler like Denise Gomez uh, found out. And I think she's definitely got the uh, better striking over the course of 15 minutes. Luana Pinheiro hits harder and she's very aggressive early on and she can 
Galicia like Vanderlei Silva or Vitor Belfort, really. But Angela Hill is very durable. No one's ever knocked Angela Hill out. She stood up to the most dangerous girls in the world, Jessica Andrade. Go watch her fight with Jessica Andrade or Amanda Lemos, two killers. Angela Hill has an excellent chin, and she can give it back. So I trust her to survive anything. I think uh, her big uh, weakness here could potentially be the wrestling because she can still be out-wrestled, even though she's becoming more easy to trust these days. But Luana Pinheiro doesn't have the wrestling or the overall grappling of like a Verna Jandadroba or a Lupi Godinez, who Angela Hill beat a year ago or whatever. Uh, but Luana does have strength on her side. She's stronger on the inside, and she's got head and arm throws, which aren't nothing. I like to shit on them because they could be easily counted and whatever, but they're still quite effective these days. Uh, you know, so uh, it's not nothing, and that could be enough to win the fight. Uh, but I do think Angela Hill uh, will... The one thing I'm more sure of than anything and how this fight plays out is that Angela Hill is doing better in the end. Luana Pinheiro, she got knocked out in round three against Amanda Hebosh in her last fight uh, with a spinning back kick, wheel kick, hook kick. And then against Michelle Woodison Gomez, I didn't think she looked gassed, but I did think Michelle won the fight. And the same thing with Sam Hughes. I thought Sam Hughes won round three. And I meant to say Michelle Woodison won round three as well. I just think, um, yeah, she's got that type of style where she's feeding her muscles in a way that other fighters don't have to, and she's going to be more tired in the end of the fight. And that is certainly the case against Angela Hill, who has an exceptional work rate among any strawweights, among all strawweights, I should say. Uh, but Angela Hill does have more than her share of losses, and her last loss, she showed a lot of toughness and grit and whatever, but it was a one-sided ass-kicking for five rounds against Mackenzie Dern. She can still be bullied, and she's never going to have the physicality advantage over anybody. I think on the inside, Luana Pinheiro is bullying her around. She's probably got thighs that are the size of Angela Hill's waist. I think she's the stronger girl in tight. But I have to pick Angela Hill because I just think uh, Luana Pinheiro uh, will fall off a little bit. And I think Angela Hill will make the most of round three by really turning it up, especially if... Uh, uh, she senses that Luana's fading at all. Luana has another loss. It was the Chris McFair Fajeda Macedo, whatever. Uh, but I've seen the fight. It was definitely close enough. But I just wanted to mention that she came storming out of the gate on fire and she got clotheslined. And that's how she began the fight. And then she got up and charged her and pinned her against the cage and started having some success. In the end, it was a very close fight. Uh, but she definitely had aggression on her side throughout the whole fight, and especially in the beginning when she ran face first into a clothesline. So just wanted to mention that. Uh, but yeah, Luana Pinheiro, I think she's definitely the better submission artist as well in this matchup. That's something I should ma mention. I think uh, she's not going to submit uh, Angela Hill, but if anybody was to get the submission, I would pick it to be Luana Pinheiro. Uh, but again, I think she's at the UFC level. We're going to see much more points battles, and this is one I think she's going to lose. She falls off a little bit. She's not able to make this a grappling fight, and Angela Hill starts to take over a little bit. I still think it'll be close, but I'm favoring Angela Hill. Angela Hill, by decision, is the pick. I bet on her because it's so tight, but of course I'll wait for the props because, uh, you know, I'm very sure, especially if Angela Hill wins, that it's by uh, decision. Next up, we have Adrian Yanez versus Vinicius Salvador. My prediction for this fight is Adrian Yanez wins by decision. I think a TKO is certainly possible for him, though. So considering the fact that he's a minus 360 under, uh, favorite and the fact that I can't isolate his path to victory to one thing, I'm not going to bet on him at all, probably. But Vinicius Salvador sitting at plus 285. That wasn't enough to entice me, but I can isolate his path to victory to one thing, that being TKO. So I'll wait for the props, and if it's uh, far enough removed from his money line, maybe I'd consider betting on it. And not a big bet at all, because I do think Yanez wins. I th certainly think he wins if it goes the distance, but if you told me somebody gets TKO'd in this fight, I'd still favor Yanez. 
I think Salvador is overall more dangerous and Yanez has been looking increasingly more vulnerable lately, getting stopped twice in his last two fights. But I still think Yanez has the much better overall offense and he's pretty damn healthy as well. I don't think uh, Vinicius Salvador could duplicate the success of Jonathan Martinez, the last guy to beat him, chopping him down like that. They are polar opposites as far as striking goes. And I do think he could duplicate the success of Rob Font and crack the chin of Adrian Yanez. But Yanez, that's the only time he's been finished like that. I don't think he's got a bad chin. I think Rob Font just caught him. Uh, so I think uh, his health will be there for him and he'll be safe. And I do think he gets the better of this fight and takes over with his boxing. The guy's an incredible fighter, incredible boxer in particular. And uh, if you're not uh, if you're not taking him down, most of the time you're in trouble. He's got three other losses, Adrian Yanez, before he got to the UFC. And they're all to UFC caliber fighters. Miles Johns and Domingo Pilarte. Both beat him by split decision. Those are Uf former UFC fighters. And Miles Johns is a current UFC fighter. And he also lost to Levi Moles, who was a beast of a fighter, could have been in the UFC, and a really good wrestler. Speaking of which, that's also how he lost to Polarte and uh, Miles Johns. I mean, they're both close fights, but he was controlled. And I don't think that's a path to victory or path to any success for Vinicius Salvador here. Of the watch, he's totally going to do it now. Uh, so I really think this is a favorable matchup for Yanez. Again, despite him coming off of two TKO losses, his offense is incredible, and he's already gotten enough great wins in the UFC, particularly over Davy Grant. It was a really tight fight and a split decision, but uh, he looked great in that fight. And Randy Costa, he had a rough start early on, but he showed his durability in that fight and also poured it on to get a late finish. Uh, got the same, a late finish, a knockout over Gustavo Lopez in his debut in round three. Oh, no, that was uh, his second fight. But I do think he's uh, I do think he's the better fighter, Yanez, by far. And I think Vinicius Salvador has a Hail Mary for him, and that's it in this fight. Salvador is also a guy that's been finished a few times, one time was like nine years ago or so, eight or nine years ago, but it was the worst knockout in either guy's career. It was just a devastating knockout to this guy, Ella Frank something. And then he was finished once by Jafel Filio, current UFC fighter. I haven't seen the fight, even though you know I've tried to, but it happened with 15 seconds left in round two. And considering how Jafel Filio fights, I'm imagining it was on the ground. Uh, so, I don't know. It's just speculation, really. And speaking of which, he's also been arm triangle choked in round two to this guy, Rafael Costa. Uh, that was uh, a fight that I was able to see. He is not great on the ground at all. I'd say Yanez is better on the ground, certainly. But I don't really think it's going to be too much of a factor. Unless Yanez finds himself getting hurt, maybe. Uh, but I do think on the feet, Yanez still has a distinct advantage. I think he'll be boxing up boxing up Venetia Salvador throughout the majority of this fight. And if he doesn't get a finish, he's definitely going to win the decision. Uh, you know, Venetia Salvador, he still doesn't have that signature win. I guess maybe he does, and it's over Shannon Ross. I don't know. He got him out of there on the Contender Series. But the way he's looked in the UFC, losing to v uh, Victor Altamirano, and C.J. Vergara, I think Yanez should definitely beat him. I think he could probably beat him following either one of those blueprints, but I do think he'd be more. Uh, this would be more of a stand-up fight, and Yanez would win that way, you know, like uh, C.J. Vergara, so, uh, but with much better boxing and totally dictating the fight. So Yanez by decision is the pick. Yanez by knockout is a possibility. And as of now, I haven't bet on anything, but if I did, I imagine it would just be a small bet on Salvador to win by TKO because I am a degenerate who likes wasting money. I can't just list all of his fights under one fucking name for you. 
Uh, but my prediction for this fight is Umar C wins. And I think I would have been picking him to win under any circumstances. But certainly the fact that George Tokos has taken this fight on four days notice only helps. And credit to Tokos, by the way. I'm happy he's in the UFC. And I hope if this one doesn't go his way, that he'll be given another shot. But Umar C is my prediction again. This guy is a solid fighter. It seems like a well-rounded guy. He's only 9-0, and so I don't know everything about him, and I want to learn more about him and see him in some tougher fights and tougher spots. But so far, he's looked good. He got two knockouts to start his career off, one of them being a beautiful head kick. He's also gotten a few submissions, three submissions in his nine wins, all by rear naked choke. One of them was deep into round two, which is a good look. And he also won two fights by decision as well, which is another good look. Uh, He didn't beat anybody great, really, but he still showed he can be dominant early on and not get discouraged when he doesn't get the finish after mounting you and still be able to control you uh, down the stretch in round three, hit that valuable takedown. So uh, not a bad look at all. And he also has two wins over UFC, former UFC fighters and his last two victories, Ildemar Alcantara and Henrique Da Silva. These guys are shells of them of their former selves. Uh, that was evident uh, from watching those fights, but he still got it done quickly. He pretty much won the same fight against both guys, uh, one being a rear naked choke, one being a TKO, but it's the same fight. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of promise with him. And I guess you could speculate about weaknesses, but there's no real reason to doubt him. Not yet. And also the guy, I think he's got physical and athletic advantages in this fight, Umar C. He might be an inch taller or maybe the same height, but he's definitely got nine inches of reach, which would certainly help him out. I mean, that is substantial. And also I think he's the sharper athlete, much quicker, and also perhaps physically stronger. Uh, George Tokos, he's definitely at an athletic and speed disadvantage in this fight. Uh, He's a guy that is 10 and three and his three losses, I'll just get to those right away. He's got two by TKO, one by decision. The decision was a Bellator fight. I wasn't able to see it. Then he lost another Bellator fight by TKO. I was able, able to see that. And I can't say he was... He definitely wasn't knocked unconscious, but his chin failed him, I think. He was hit with some big strikes and kind of half face planted and then got up and the ref stopped it, I think, as like a mercy. Uh, But yeah, he didn't seem like he was, uh, he wasn't unconscious, but he was out of it there. And his other loss, the most recent one, which was a year and a half ago to Ming Yang Zhang, who made his UFC debut uh, two months ago. That one was a knockout. He was knocked out, although this guy Zhang is incredibly dangerous. So there's that. But still a knockout is a knockout, and it's definitely a concern moving forward, especially as he fights better and bigger athletes and UFC-level fighters. So I have more doubt in him. And as far as my faith in him, he's gotten some nice wins, but nothing great. His last win is an injury. It's almost like it doesn't count, although the guy Myron Dennis would have been a nice victory. Uh, But the guy Dennis posted on a takedown and broke his arm or whatever. So that happened. And then the one before that was against this guy, Brian Jackson, who's like one in seven. And he just steamrolled the guy and pounded him out on the ground. It really looked like what a fight would look like between me and George Tokos. So... Not a great look having to fight a guy like that, but whatever. I don't know the circumstances. Maybe that was a a late-minute replacement for someone better. Uh, But uh, that's uh, not quite a good streak. And the one before that, he won a decision over this guy who had like a 3-2 and record, Gabriel Timoteo. I was able to see that fight. He won a decision. And I thought he looked good and won all three rounds, but... I didn't think the guy that won that fight was going to be beating Umar C. I'd still uh, say that guy's up against it against Umar C. He's just a uh, more of a lumbering striker. He's definitely not a sharp athlete. And a lot of times he's been reliant on his size. And it's been there for him. His size and his weight have been there for him against opponents. 
bullying them around and also reaching their chins a little more easily. And I don't think he's going to have that here against Umar C. He, uh, he also had a submission I saw him get in Fury FC, got a Darsh choke, which was a good look. And that was, you know, after hitting a takedown and then defending a takedown on his own, and he defended it with a choke. Uh, and he also got a choke that I wasn't able to see in round four, an arm triangle choke. That one's not over the best guy either, but getting a round four finish isn't the worst look either. So, you know, I, I don't know exactly what to make of his record, but having seen the majority of his fights and seen them today, I can say I don't see this guy is going to beat uh, Umar C. I think he's really up against it athletically and physically, and he is much slower. I think he's as willing to take the fight to the ground as Umar C, but not as able to. I think Umar C is much more likely to dictate this fight, and I think that's what he's going to do. A decision wouldn't surprise me for C, uh, but I guess my official prediction is he gets a TKO. And unlike the other two, I guess I would predict this one happens on the ground. Because Umar C is really good at advancing on top as, as well. You know, he's a well-rounded guy. Uh, but this one could go either way. I don't think I'll bet on it at all. And the only way I'd bet on Umar C. Next up, we have Chaos Williams versus Carlston Harris in the co-main event. My prediction for this fight is Chaos Williams wins a decision. Uh, but he is Chaos Williams, so a knockout is always possible. Especially considering that Carlston Harris has been finished twice. And even though they're years apart, they are in his last two losses. And he's also 36, Carlston Harris. So I suppose a knockout is possible. Uh, but my prediction, I guess, is Chaos winning by decision. And I think it would still be a striking battle that he wins by decision. Chaos Williams has durability and power on his side here. And he's also proven to be a solid three-round fighter. So I think... Unless he gets ripped to the mat by Carlston Harris, I think he'll be winning this fight. And also, if unless he falls into an anaconda choke. Because you don't need to be out-wrestled and out-grappled to fall into an anaconda choke, as Jeremiah Wells showed us a few months ago. Uh, Carlston Harris has a killer anaconda choke. And while chaos has never been submitted or knocked out as a pro or an amateur, if one guy was to finish him by submission, I would think it'd be somebody like Carlston Harris. He's definitely one of the contenders. He's got a nifty anaconda choke. It's been there for him in his last three submission wins, two of them in the UFC over Christian Aguilera in round one and over Jeremiah Wells in round three. But actually the best win was over the guy Saigid that he beat before coming to the UFC. He got him out of there in round two. Uh, but either way, it's a distinct advantage for Carlston Harris, and it's always going to be a threat for all 15 minutes. So Chaos has to watch, uh, watch his ass here, mind his P's and Q's. Chaos has been defeated three times as a pro, all by decision, and the last two of which come in the UFC against Michelle Pareda and Randy Brown. I don't think Carlston Harris is going to – I don't think he has the striking – to follow the success of those guys. Michel Pareda and Randy Brown are much more mobile fighters, incredibly mobile fighters, and Randy Brown has the height and reach of a heavyweight, so that helps. Uh, but Carlson Harris, he's much more slower and not so much of a volume guy. He's more of a weird striking kind of guy, and every now and then those weird strikes come through for him like they did against Impa Kasanganai. But uh, here, he's not going to be in... Chaos Williams' face, like Rolando Bedoya was in his last fight. And he's also not going to be uh, making him look like a stupid bull and playing the matador either. So I think on the feet, unless he totally clips Chaos Williams and is the first guy to really go through his chin, uh, I think uh, he's going to be up against it here. I think the first guy to get hurt or finish would be Carlson Harris. And I also think in a points battle, Chaos Williams would win that as well. Uh, but Carlson Harris, he's got five losses, the last two of which are knockouts. Uh, Jeral Al-Sawali knocked him out in 2018. And a year and a half, two years ago, he was knocked out by Shavkat Rachmanov. That was in the UFC, and it was with a spinning back kick, wheel kick, special super finishing move. So it's a little forgivable. 
especially because it is Shavkat. But still, it happened, and it only makes me more sure that if one guy was to go down, it would be Carlston Harris. But uh, he does have that incredible anaconda choke, like I said, and he's also got good cardio as well. And I think he's the better overall grappler and the more willing grappler here. I think he's the uh, the guy more willing to rip chaos to the mat, but I don't think he's going to be able to. I could be wrong about that. He's been able to control other guys. Jared Gooden recently, one of his uh, more recent wins. But uh, if uh, if he's not able to do that, I think he's really in, uh, running into trouble here and he's going to be reliant on catching chaos for the first time or choking chaos for the first time. And he could do that. And maybe I will bet on it. His submission is a plus 450, Carlston Harris. But right now, my only bets are Chaos Williams at minus 130 and a sprinkle on him winning by decision at plus 550. Uh, that is my pick for him to win by decision. So I had to bet on it at such good odds. Uh, his knockout line, uh, Chaos Williams, is plus 130. That's nicer than minus 130, but not nice enough where I would bet on it. I'd feel much more comfortable with the money line. So uh, I will uh, I will uh, wait to see what happens here, but I think uh, my bets are pretty much set, you know, unless uh, things move drastically. I slightly favor Chaos Williams to win this fight here, and my pick is him to win by decision, and the decision is a nice prop. So let's hope he makes it happen. have Larone Murphy taking on Edson Barbosa. My prediction for this fight is Edson Barbosa wins by late TKO or decision. And despite him being an underdog, I haven't bet on that because I don't know. I'm scared. Uh, no, look, I really, uh, I think this one could go either way. I have a lot of faith in Larone Murphy, uh, but I do feel like this could be that next level type of fight. And Edson Barbosa, if you look at uh, Lerone Murphy's record coming off a win over Josh Kulabau, Edson Barbosa is definitely that next level. He's never fought a guy as good as him, and specifically on the feet, he's never fought a guy quite like Edson Barbosa. Uh, Lerone Murphy, he is 5-0-1 in the UFC, and 13-0-1 as a pro. He's had two really close fights, the draw, of course, to Zabera Tukagov in his UFC debut, and also his win last year, a year ago, against Gabriel Santos. Uh, both guys had a good amount of grappling control, good amount of ground control on him, uh, which you could argue could have swung either fight. And Zubera Tukagov hurt him early, dropped him with a big left hook and pounced on him where he could have gotten a finish early. Uh, but Lerone Murphy was able to deal with all this adversity, being hurt against Tukagov and being out grappled against both guys, weather the storm, make shit work for him, and have a, a better round three in general, and put himself in a position to win a decision or not lose a decision. And that's what happened. He's still undefeated, and here he is in his main event. Uh, Gabriel, the Gabriel Santos fight was very close, but again, he did outlast Santos. He was controlled uh, by Amakwan Amir Khani early on in their fight and then knocked him out five seconds into round two with a beautiful counter knee. So there's that. Uh, but I'd say his best win so far is over Douglas Silva de Andrade. They beat Douglas Silva de Andrade by decision. Douglas Silva de Andrade is a very good fighter, always been kind of under the radar. Uh, but yeah, uh, beating that guy over the course of three rounds and bullying him was a very good look. And also he knocked out the uh, Ricardo Hamos in uh, uh, his uh, first victory officially in the UFC. He just cracked him and pounded him out on the ground. Uh, so he's looked really good so far. You could argue perfect, even though he's had some dicey uh, fights. Uh, but there's no real reason to doubt Lerone Murphy. He seems like he's... Uh, Got something going on on the ground. I mean, he can't be as good as he is on the feet, but he's no slouch on the ground at all. And on the feet, while he's shown he can be hurt, he has shown he can recover the one time he was hurt, and he's proven to have excellent cardio and been a reliable three-round fighter in the UFC. And, of course, here he's going five rounds against Edson Barbosa. This would be the first time that uh, Lerone Murphy will go five rounds. So this could be something new. 
and Edson Barbosa has plenty of five-round experience. And even though he didn't need five rounds to turn the fight around against Sadiq Youssef in his last win, he still made the most of it and really turned that fight around after a rough first round where he was hurt, nearly finished, and I was about to write him off for the fifth time in his career. And then a half hour later, I was saying it was the best he ever looked. The best he ever looked. But he did look great after that first round ass kicking. And he tamed Sadiq Youssef, and Sadiq Youssef couldn't keep up with him, and he was uh, a step and a half behind the veteran for the rest of that fight, even though uh, Edson wasn't able to uh, put him away. It was still a great performance. And before that, of course, Edson knocked out Billy Quarantillo. I was picking Billy Quarantillo to win that fight, to wear on Edson Barbosa, crowd him, be in his face, and suck some of the life out of him, get him out of there down the stretch. And Edson said no to that with his own knee and uh, knocked Billy out, just like uh, Lorraine well, Murphy knocking out Maquan Amir Khani. Uh, Edson's been finished a few times before, though. He's been TKO'd four times, the last of which comes against Giga Chikadze, who got him out of there in round three. Chikadze's an excellent striker, and uh, he was able to outstrike uh, Edson Barboza, hurt him a few times in that fight, and finally put him away. It was a rough fight, and that was one of the times where I said, all right, he's done, and I wrote him off for the fourth time. He was also knocked out by Justin Gaethje five years ago. Gaethje is Gaethje, but still was a legit knockout with a looping right hand right on the chin. Kevin Lee got him out of there in round five. He really beat him down in that fight, but it was a doctor stoppage. There was no failure of the chin. It was just a really rough night at the office for uh, Edson Barbosa. And, of course, way back when, he was knocked out by Jamie Varner in his first loss. Varner was an excellent wrestler boxer from his day. And he just went through Edson Barboza with some really nice long strikes. He had really good boxing, and he uh, knocked him out. Barboza has also been submitted on two occasions. Donald Cerrone tapped, uh, tapped him out after knocking him down. And Tony Ferguson got him with a Darce choke the Tony Ferguson special in a bloody fucking fight where Edson had his moments early. So Edson Barbosa is more vulnerable, but these fights take place over the course of 35 years or however long he's been in the UFC. And even though we've seen him lose to the newcomer and Bryce Mitchell, who Bryce dropped him and Bryce thoroughly outgrappled him and Dan Ige, I don't know if he was a newcomer or whatever, but Dan Ige had a really close fight with Edson of, a war for three rounds, and he walked away with a tight decision. I thought it should have went the other way, but either way. The point is, yeah, I've written Edson off, and I said, oh, he's a stepping stone for these youngsters time and time again, and that could certainly be the case here. I could see that being the case against Lerone Murphy, but I think he's going to hand Lerone Murphy his first loss, and I'd be much more confident if I saw him uh, take this fight into deep waters. Not because I don't trust the cardio of Lerone Murphy. Again, it's been there for him. But I have more faith in the cardio and the overall five-round experience of Edson Barbosa. That combined with what I imagine would be a distinct kickboxing advantage over the course of five rounds. In round one, I don't know about that. But I do think over the course of five rounds, Edson would be the one chopping him down as opposed to the other way around. So... Uh, without having seen Lerone Murphy lose and having to guess about what it would look like if Barbosa won, I guess I'd say decision. Lerone Murphy's looked pretty tough. But uh, like I was saying when he was fighting Sadiq Yusuf as I was watching the fight, oh, this one could end. I think he could wear on him. And I do feel like if the fight's going that way, he could wear on Lerone Murphy and hand him his first loss uh, by TKO. As for Lerone Murphy winning, yeah, again, I couldn't even tell you if it'd be more likely to be by decision or TKO. I could say it probably wouldn't be by submission because Lerone doesn't have a submission victory yet. But Lerone Murphy, I do think if he was to win by TKO, it would be early in the fight in rounds one or two. I don't think it's going to be a sustained beating and then getting him out of there like Giga Chikadze did. I think Edson Barbosa would be more likely to win down the stretch just by being the sharper technical kickboxer. I think he would have that advantage. 
Uh, so the official prediction is Edson Barbosa wins. And even though he's at plus money and he is my prediction, I haven't bet on him because I'm simply too scared. Uh, but yeah, I do hope to see and learn more about Lerone Murphy. This one is going to tell us a lot more than any other fight he's had in the UFC. And I hope uh, this one does go long, not just because I'm picking Edson to win, but also because I want to learn a lot more about Lerone Murphy. And I really hope he gets going. He's had five fights in five years. Uh, he's been a little more active as of late. He's had some layoffs for one reason or another. But yeah, now's the time to strike. This is your prime. And I hope you do strike and get outstruck by Edson Barbosa. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit. And check out my other videos.